up and welcome to live at five brought to you by foreman watson holtry your problem is our passion that's fwhlegal.com i'm Stephen a turner i have this first segment uh, here solo with the thoroughbreds guys here in just a little bit on a thoroughbreds thursday i do want to remind you to download that owensboro radio app you can listen anywhere in the world including right now the e-gals are playing over on wvjs in the sweet 16 stay locked into all the covers you're taking on henderson county they're on WVJS as we speak right now. So download that Owensboro Radio app. You can flip back and forth between Live at 5 and the state tournament coverage. Also brought to you by Foreman Watson Holtry. Also follow along 1027 The Game, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Got a big show lined up for you today. It's a volunteer Owensboro segment coming up, segment two. We'll have Stephanie, or excuse me, uh, Kathy Mullins uh, with uh, Kentucky Remembers uh, joining us in segment number two. Talk a little bit about Gavin Wimsett's recruiting. Uh, we got a little uh, draft prospect with UK U of L coming up with David Clark in segment three and close things out talk about the uh, all a and the uh, 2a championships here in owensboro but it is a thoroughbred thursday and a welcome to the studio uh, coach mark anderson and Corey wilford guys how y'all doing doing good, good. yep good steven a thanks for having us absolutely look forward to it man the season is is here i mean there's no yeah. talking about it getting ready for it you guys uh, are, are in full swing now and then getting ready to kick off the the regular season but uh, got an exhibition game under your belt you know and uh, how's things going coach it's going well. Uh, we had media day on Monday in Evansville. Um, that went really well. The guys had fun making the video with Wonder Boy, and they do an excellent job. Uh, just on a sad note, one of our players, Michael Davenport, lost his father early Monday morning. Uh, he passed away, and Michael's going to rejoin us this weekend. But, again, our prayers are out to him and his family. Uh, they're good people, and it's just you just never can be prepared for something like that. Sure, tough thing to go through. I mean, right. you know, no doubt. And, uh, you know, coming back to the team, you guys can rally around him a little bit, and that would be a good distraction, I think, in, in that type of situation, as good as you can hope for uh, in that situation. You mentioned Wonder Boy Media in the, in the house here today. Shout getting, out getting Wonder video Boy. video, and, uh, <laughs> man, so I'm saying I kind of feel official in here right now. I got right. Wonder Boy in here do a great so, job. Uh, company over there does a great job. But uh, let's talk about the game really quick. Uh, you guys got a win in, on the road in Kokomo in the exhibition season, 117-103. to 103. Got to see a little bit of it on the Facebook page. And, man, we talked about last time, you know, uh, gelling as a team when you put a, a bunch of different guys together, even though there's a lot of talent there, uh, putting putting it together and making it work as a team. Looked like you guys got off on the right step up in Kokomo. Well, I'll let Corey talk a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, man, we got a lot of high IQ guys on this team, and, you know, it started out a little rocky, but, you know, like Coach said yesterday in practice, once we settled in and played our game as opposed to playing the way Kokomo played, we get, we, we, we kind of settled in with, you know, running our offense, getting stops, and, you know, the score showed. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, you've been uh, a fixture in Owensboro since the TBL came along. And you play with multiple different uh, teammates uh, come through. And then you you went to different teams as well. You know, how hard is it to find that flow, you know, with different guys and make it work? Because this is a, a highly competitive league and you got to figure it out pretty quick. Right. I mean, well, when you're dealing with pro pro athletes or pro pro basketball players, to be exact, I think it's pretty easy. You know, um, coach puts us in in good positions as far as like with the with the system that we run, and you got smart players, and it's really pretty easy for you. Yeah, and talk about some of your teammates. You know, that uh, the community's going to get to find out about them uh, on the 16th as you guys open up at the Owensboro Sports Center home opener on the 16th, 7 p.m. We'll be talking about that leading up to that. But uh, tell the listeners out there what they can expect to see when these guys come rolling into the Sports Center with yourself. For sure. Well, leading the charge, we got Matthew Hart. Uh, Matthew is tough as nails, smart point guard, very high Q guy. Works hard. I'm pretty sure he's probably somewhere in the gym right now. Uh, he does a lot of training, so be look, be on the lookout for some for some. Yes, for I, sure. I'm his hype man because listen, he he played in the league when we called the games last time. He was uh, I don't know it was Rochester. Vegas, Rochester. Yes. He come in and buried us. I oh, mean, yeah. you know, he, the dude can shoot. Matthew's not scared of anybody on the court. Yeah, and I've been telling her that's a dude that can absolutely flat out play, and I've seen it with my own eyes on another franchise. Just happy to have him with Owensboro now. For sure. Then we got Big Chuck and uh, Big Shaq. 
you know, holding it down in the paint. Uh, two, two real physical guys, you know, guys that we can dump the ball down too low, uh, down low, and they can get us an easy bucket anytime. Yeah, I feel like that's some of the in the past. Maybe that was the one piece that was missing, the paint guys, the post exactly. guys. And that's all I've heard. I've heard a lot of people that are around the team are like, man, we're not we're not lacking the post guys anymore. You can dump it down to them and depend on them to go get for you a sure, bucket down there. For sure, yeah. We we definitely make that a, a vocal point of, of this year's team is feeding our post guys. Yeah, and, you know, it, it, other other teammates out there that you, worth Yeah, mentioning? man, like we said, we got Michael Davenport. Me and Michael played with Coach Anderson, uh, Coach Anderson in Jamestown two years ago. Uh, we got Evan returning. Uh, we got Javion Ease out of Madisonville. Uh, a lot of local folks know that. A lot name. of yeah, Javion can light it up, and you know he he had a real good exhibition game on. Um, was it Monday, Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah. They all run together, don't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can relate to that. Definitely, but yeah, man, I I'm excited. You know, I, I'm very excited. We've been working hard. Uh, the rookies are coming along with uh, Darius and Cam, so. We're just having fun, just trying to get better every day. And there's one guy you didn't mention, though. His name is Corey Wilford, Man. and that guy's back. And uh, I think, was it today's the two-year anniversary, right? Today's, yeah. I don't know if that popped up on your Facebook, but today's the two-year anniversary. We were at Albany playing on a Saturday. Uh, Corey scores 10 points in 12 seconds. I've never seen that at any level. He had 41 off the bench. Now, wow. he, he ended up being TBL Sixth Man of the Year in 2019. And average, I would say, right around 22 to 23 minutes a game and about 18 points a game off the bench. So never complain once about coming off the bench. I credit that to Coach Anderson, man. He's one of the best coaches I've ever played for. Like, the, the amount of confidence he puts in, you know, each of his players, like, it's – you don't find that too too much in these in these coaches these days. Nothing to complain about when you're scoring 41 off the bench. Right? <laughs> it's all good at that point. You know, it's funny you you mentioned it because we were at, doing the third region tournament. You come on with us at halftime, late in the game. I think Caleb Farkas was calling the game with us. He said, "Less Reggie Miller's in the house. This game's over." I was like. Well, Corey Wilkins here, so I don't know if that counts or not, but he's in the house because I've seen him knock down about three threes in a matter of about 20 seconds to come back and win a game in the past. So that's kind of what the, the people out there that maybe are not familiar with the product that the thoroughbreds have put on the floor in the past, you got a guy here that you could be down 10 points under a minute. You got Corey on the floor, you're not out of the game. Not I've seen over it. to that buzzer ring. No, and that's what happened to us last year. We were up 10 with about a minute 30, minute 40 to go in the game. And lost because we didn't have a rim protector and we couldn't secure that defensive rebound to stop the runs. And that's exactly why I went and we got Chuck back and we got Meshack out of the NBL who played over in Romania last year at 6'9", 250. You know, he's a load down there and he proved that the other night up in Kokomo that once he get, he had a slow start, self-admitted, he'll tell you that. Um, but once he got rolling, he had ended up with 21 and 13 rebounds and was a, a paint presence, and that's the thing that we were lacking, as you pointed out before. Yeah, it's, that's great. You, you see a weakness, you go out and you uh, identify that in the off season and take care of it. Of course, COVID kind of set us back too last year. Were you surprised at how well you guys came out of the gate in Kokomo, or did you kind of expect to come out swinging like that? Um, <laughs> I guess <laughs> Put I, you on the spot. I, I guess, yeah, no, you did, and, and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was. Yeah, I thought well, because Kokomo had already had a game under their belt albeit preseason, so you just never know. And that's why I was glad that we got the chance to, one, travel on the road, two, to get used to that, and then to play a game. We, we were kind of short on the bench due to injuries. Uh, we had seven, or eight, we had eight players that could suit up and play. And as a result, yes, I was, uh, I was pleasantly surprised at how efficient we became. They out-rebounded us. We had more turnovers. We had less assists. But we shot really well from twos and threes, and that was the difference in the game. You scored more points at the end we of the did. day. That, we that, did. We that, did. That, that's that not something you always want to rely on sure, in the sense absolutely. of, you know, the other aspects of it. But rebounding, we were only out-rebounded by three. But the thing is, is that, you know, we, in the second half, uh, they well, in the first half, they had one of their players had 26 at the half. Second half, he only ended up with six. So he still had 32, but... 
we shut him down in the second half because we were closing down there. We made it one and done every time they came down in the second half, and that was that was huge. Sounds like some good adjustments to me there at, at the half. And, uh, you know, I was going to ask you what you got to look to work on as you head to your opener. The season opener is actually going to be Saturday, uh, April the 10th, uh, coming up at Dayton. So, uh, you know, what are some things you're looking to uh, improve upon as you guys roll into the regular season starting Saturday? Uh, more efficiency on offense in the way of spacing. I, I'll, I'll tell you, one thing I adjusted, and, and I got this, you know, like we talked last week, I've been doing this for over 30 years. And the thing is, it, it, you still have to reinvent yourself to stay relevant in the game. Well, I was listening to Jeff Van Gundy podcast over the summer, and the guy that was interviewing asked him, well, what's one thing you wish you would have done earlier in your career? He goes, more five on five. Well, this year... The majority of our practices, any drills, are full court, five on five. And then we have a um, 12-minute segment of controlled scrimmages, 12 minutes, i.e. the 12-minute quarter, so they get used to that. So we've done more up and down. And I think that's also gotten us in better shape quicker because we don't do suicides. We don't do any of that at the end because everything is conditioned as we're rolling for an hour and a half, two hours with each practice. Yeah, and, you, and Corey, you mentioned uh, Coach Anderson being one of the best coaches you've ever played for, if not the best coach. You know, what is it that you enjoy so much about the, the presence that Coach brings to the floor and brings to the team? Uh, it's just the amount of confidence that he puts into his players. Like, you know, he, he understands these players' weakness and, and, and their strong points, and he does his best to, you know, put them in spots to make them flourish on the court, you know. So he's just a player's coach man he, he's not gonna pull you out for a bad shot he'll let you know about it but you know he's he's not gonna pull you out for mistakes and nothing like that and that's the thing i'm trying to let the rookies understand you know just go play your game like coach is gonna allow you to play you know just keep you keep your confidence high because he got confidence in you yeah and you know you you're you're a big influence in the community here in owensboro for the folks that don't know i mean you're you you're working with the youth of Owensboro pretty much solid straight for what the past what three years yeah, I mean it's, it's been, been rolling for about three years you solid. know taking that knowledge you know you, you take stuff away from coach you see how he does things and take that and maybe put it in your repertoire for the, uh, for the oh, young yeah, folks for sure I mean I, I just finished up my first year as a head coach for girls there and you go we was running push and swing you know the same <laughs> offense that coach have us run we was running it at burns middle school <laughs> so you're the burns girl i knew you're i thought you're at burns but I, I knew you'd picked up a middle school job that's awesome man and, and you know it. and i think that speaks volumes too you know we've talked about that before it's one thing to say you're involved in the community and you want to be involved but it's another thing to go out and actually do it i mean you, you can check Corey's facebook page and you can see how involved in the community that he is you know guys running the, the confidence camps i thought were tremendous, you know, because a lot of confidence is big. Yeah, that's that's big, key. That's I mean, when I was a young kid, I think that's probably what held me back the most is just not having that mentor there to give me that confidence that I needed. And the fact, I'm not that talented. But, <laughs> <laughs> but if I'd have had that push, you know, I think that's huge. And I love the way you guys called it the confidence league because kids at that age – Sometimes that's all you need, man, just a little bit of confidence. That's it. I mean, and confidence comes through hard work and repetition. So, like I tell the kids every day, if you're putting in that consistent work over time, then it'll show. And the more you work, the more confidence you get. Yeah, absolutely, man. And you guys got Dayton coming up. I know everybody's kind of different with different squads and whatnot, but you've been in the league long enough to know, maybe know some guys. You know, what, uh, what kind of uh, problems can Dayton uh, present for you guys? What kind of team are you looking at on Saturday? They have five returners out of the 10 or 12 on the roster. Um, their perimeter game is pretty good. They have a good left-handed uh, point guard, Terrell Means, that's pretty good. Tyshawn Johnson, who can fill it up. So they, they, they kind of match up with our perimeter game. Now, the difference can be I don't know anything really much about their inside because it's all new guys in there. Sure. And they haven't been in the league before, so we have to maybe search some YouTube to find some highlights. But the thing is, is that um, the difference is going to be our inside game and the fact that we should have a full bench this weekend, too, to help. So we're looking forward to it now. Then we turn around on Sunday and go up to Columbus, which they were one of the better teams last year that we didn't play. It was right before COVID. As a matter of fact, it was the weekend that everything shut down. They were supposed to come down here Sunday. So they're going to be very good. It's kind of like Indy from last year. These guys have all played together for years, uh, so they're a veteran team. But, again, we've got a different team this year, and it's a different feel, 
and it's a different atmosphere here for the thoroughbred. So it's going to be a fun weekend for us. That's the point I really want to drive home to the listeners. More than anything, <clears throat> same name, uh, but it's a different foundation. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, the foundation is like you can speak to that, Corey. I mean, you know, you know in the past, you know, the team didn't have an owner. It was kind of a rudderless ship. I mean, you guys had tons of talent, but you're still just trying to find your footing. You had – the, the top uh, you know, talent was fine, but it right. was the foundation that was a little bit shaky. But now uh, Chris Allison's came on board, man, and it, it, it's really poured himself into the community. I mean, gone all out in all aspects, and it, the community's got to get involved and, and give the thoroughbreds a chance and come out to the sports center. Tell the listeners why it's different this time around. Yeah, like you said, man, Chris Allison, he's a great guy. Everything that he said, you know, he was going to do from day one a couple years ago, he's done it. Um and I can attest that he absolutely has. Behind oh, yeah, the scenes, he has done it. If he's he says it, it he, it's done. I'll tell you a quick story, man. Before we had Coach Anderson, when Coach Anderson was still in Jamestown, he was like, what is it going to do to get you to come back to Owensboro? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm going back to Jamestown with Coach Anderson. And he's like, well, what is it going to take to get you back to Owensboro? I was like, go get Coach Anderson. And there you look, and <laughs> Coach is here. So <laughs> he did it. Chris is going to do whatever he got to do to make sure that the thoroughbreds are successful. Man, I love that. That's a good story. And, you know, and at the end of the day, that's kind of the – that's kind of the mindset that I've seen from Chris behind the scenes, too. What what do I need to get done? And then he just goes and gets it done. Yeah. And, and so far, it's been nothing but great behind the scenes. And I think the community is going to be very impressed with the product. If, if, if what I saw on Facebook the other night, y'all's game at Kokomo, is any indication of what the, the community has something here. And me and Dave were talking about this off the air, full transparency. I can't believe we have something this level of basketball in Owensboro. And I don't, think, I, don't think, I don't think people out there know. The, the key is letting them know. You know, I think Correct. they got to get into the sports center. And once you get a couple games under your belt, you're going to understand you can't miss a thoroughbreds game because it's, it's NBA-level action out there here in Owensboro. You can't beat it. Can't beat it. And it's going to be good action across the league. Again, you know, the thing is is that so many guys that couldn't go back overseas are now playing in the TBL. So the competition is going to be extremely high. Yeah, I didn't so, think about that aspect. So a lot of guys that may have gone overseas, COVID and whatnot, has kept them home. That's right. And it just yeah. stocked the league with even more talent. It has than it already had. <laughs> right. It's crazy. And you got and the league has expanded. I mean, it's it's yes. huge. You got Stevie Franchise owning a team down in Houston. I mean, right. that's right. That's my guy down there, a former Houston Rocket. Uh, but man, appreciate you guys coming in and uh, look forward to Thoroughbred Thursdays every week. Looking forward to that home opener on yes, the sixteenth. We'll that's have right. it here on the Cromwell Family of Networks, guys. Take care and good luck this weekend. We'll be following along, and we'll talk about uh, the results of the game when we come back on the air on Monday. All right. Thank you. Good. Thanks hey, for appreciate having it. Thanks. Corey Wilford, Coach Mark Anderson. we got Wonder Boy Media in the house. When we come back, it's going to be Be the Change Volunteer Owensboro segment. We'll go with Kathy Mullins from Kentucky Your Members, live at 5, 1027 The Game.